there's a spirit that is gripping our world today. It is like a vice or noose around our neck. It is all about bondage, darkness, gloominess, hopelessness, and sadness. Tony Broom Ministries offers you deliverance and freedom today through the following message from 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 through 23. The title is, The Spirit of Antichrist. I want to talk to us about the spirit of Antichrist. The Bible talks to us about Antichrist. We hear a lot about the beast in the book of the Revelation. But the word Antichrist is only mentioned in 1 John. That was an interesting thing to me that all the people preach about the Antichrist and you hear sermons about the Antichrist and the beast and false prophet and all that. But Antichrist is only mentioned in the book of 1 John and it's only mentioned here in chapter 2. We're looking at verses 18 through 23. Verses 18 through 23, 1 John chapter 2. And the thing that is a big thing about the spirit of Antichrist is its characteristic of the last days. We know that we're living in the last days. And one of the characteristics of the last days is the spirit of Antichrist. This spirit, this force, if you will, the more than a force, but it's the spirit, the force of this evil, powerful, evil spirit that has taken over the world and the world system in these last days. Now, Satan has no power in himself. He has the power, the only power that he has. Now, he has the ability to give away the kingdoms of this world to whoever he will, he told Jesus. I will give you this kingdom. I'll give you all this if you'll fall down and worship me. And he said this has been delivered to me and I can give it to whoever I want to. But he has no power in himself. This power has been delivered to me. He said that. He said this power has been del delivered to me. Who delivered it to him? God didn't deliver it to him. We did. We turned everything over, lock, stock, and barrel to Satan. We turned it all, every bit all over to him. In the garden when we fell, when mankind fell in the garden, we turned every bit of it over to Satan. And we gave him the dominion. We gave him the authority. We gave him that which God had given to us. We turned it all over to him. When we listened to him and when we ate of the tree and when we did what God told us not to do, we turned every bit of it all over to him. And this power that is gripping our world in this last days that we're living in, it seems powerful and it is powerful, but it makes you think that the devil is such a powerful one and he has all this power, this great power. The devil has no great power. The devil has evil power, and the only reason he has it is because we've given it over to him. The devil actually is becoming more powerful. It's because we're turning further and further, or as my friend Jensen Franklin says, further and further away from God. And we're turning further away from God America is getting further away from God, and the further we get from God, the more power we're delivering into the hands of the devil, as it were. And in one sense, we gave it all to him in the beginning. But we see him becoming even more powerful now. But this characteristic of the last days, and John says, little children, paida, the word is an affectionate word. It just says little children. It's not talking about a gender word. It's not talking about maybe a son or a daughter. It just says inclusive of everyone. Paida, little children. And it speaks to us of how God looks at us as children of God. We're all children of God. And he says, little children, I want to tell you something. It is the last time. And we know that we're living in the last time. But the word here used for time is hora. It's the same word for hour. Not only are we living in the last days, not only are we living in the last time, but we're living in the last hours. He said, this is the last horror. This is the last hour. This is the last time. As ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. They're classified as many. We know that there is a one person, Satan Superman, and as I said, he offered to give it to Jesus. He said, if you'll fall down and worship me, 
how dumb and stupid of him to think that the Son of God was going to fall down and worship him, but he has always had this desire that somebody and somebody's would fall down and worship him. He's always wanted to be worshipped. Ever since he had that place in heaven with God, and he led in the worship, he knew what it was to worship with God, to lead in the worship, and he coveted that. That's what he had as his downfall. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to be greater and like the Most High. He wanted people to worship him. He's always had this desire to be worshipped. If you'll fall down and worship me, I'll give it all to you. And there will come some one somebody. We don't know his name. We don't know exactly who he is. But there was coming one somebody that's going to be Satan's Superman that will be the Antichrist, and he will gain sway over this whole world. And he'll have religious power. He'll have political power. He'll have all this persuasion that we can see even now setting up. The setting up is being prepared even now. And John said it in his day. In our day, certainly we see it even more profoundly. The spirit of Antichrist is at work in the world today. You have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. Now there's not but one Antichrist, but there are many Antichrists. There are many who are working with this same spirit of Antichrist and they will culminate and come together and this one person will rule over all of them and the whole world will go after him and worship him. But they are classified as many. The characteristic of the last day is that the spirit of Antichrist, it, it characterizes the last days. We can see that in great extremity in the time that we're living the last days is characterized by the spirit of antichrist and not only is it characterized by the spirit of antichrist but it's classified as many there are many who are going after this system and you even ask yourself sometimes how in the world can people be so stupid and i hate to use that word stupid when pastor rob is here he said all right if you don't like us to use the word stupid we'll say the king james way thou fool so Every which way you want to say it. But you say, how in the world can people be so dumb? How can they think the way they're thinking? How can they vote the way they're voting? How can they live the way they're living? And how in the world do we keep on going down the road of destruction? If you see yourself falling into a pit of quicksand, you want to do whatever you can to get yourself out of it. If you see yourself going towards danger, going to a dead-end road, you want to do what you can turn around and go the other way but yet we're going further and further down this road of destruction in this spirit of antichrist in the age that we're living and it seems like we can't even turn ourselves around but god gives us a mind he gives us a brain he gives us a heart he gives us a ways that we can make things better some preachers preach that it'll never get better it's just gonna get worse and worse well god has given us a choice the reason that they are, they're right. It's not going to get better because apparently people have lost their rationale. They've lost their ability to choose, but God gave them that. God gives us a freedom of will. We don't have to choose evil. We don't have to do evil. We don't have to be evil. We don't have to live evil. We don't have to die in sin. We have a choice, and all we have to do is make the right choice. But Moses said, I set before you this day life and death, good and evil, blessing and cursing, he said, therefore, choose life that both you and your children may be blessed. It's a no-brainer. If we have the ability to choose poison or vitamins, which one are we going to choose? We have the ability to choose water or something that's going to destroy us, which would we choose? And there are many. They're classified as many antichrists today because they're going after this system. They're making laws that are diabolically against God. They're making laws that support evil, that just legalize things that you wouldn't even have dreamed of in your lifetime. And now they're not only doing it, but they legalize this and they put it into laws into our nation and make it all right. Whereby we know that it is the last time. And that's how we can know. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that we're living in the last time because it's characterized by this last time. The last hours in which we live, the spirit of Antichrist, and it's classified as many. They went out from us, 
but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Now you get lost in the language of that verse. But if you get you a cup of coffee and sip it slow and read it slow, that verse says a lot. It says they went out from us. These were people that were connected with religion. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That happened to Judas Iscariot. He was part of the twelve disciples. He took part in the ministry. Peter said he had part in the apostleship. He had part in the works that Jesus was doing and the things that they were doing. He was so important that he kept the money bag. He was a treasurer. And he figures it always came up wrong because he had his hand in the loot. And he had, John said he was a thief. And he was called a traitor. And he was called a thief. And all these things were even before he had betrayed the Lord. What an awful thing to have a Benedict Arnold to your account that you betrayed the Lord. Just like Benedict Arnold betrayed his country. And just like Josephus betrayed his nation. Everybody thinks he's a good old boy. No, he's not a good old boy. He fell to the Romans, defected to them to keep his own hide alive. And he became a great historian, they say, for the Jewish people. He wasn't for the Jewish people. He defected and went to the Romans. And everybody wrote and said he was great. No, he was a traitor, just like Judas Iscariot, just like Benedict Arnold. They went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. That happens a lot. There are people who you think, man, they believe in the Holy Ghost. They believe in sanctification. They believe in the baptism. And before you know it, they done changed and went over to another church. They don't teach about sanctification. They don't preach about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They don't practice speaking in tongues and prophesying and laying hands on the sick. But they got a big crowd. They got jumpy music. Got a lot of life going on. It looks like life. You don't know if it's spiritual life or moving emotion life or whatever it is. But they got something going on. It's where everybody seems to be going. So here comes Jim Smith and John Smack. He'll just pull his family up and take them on over there with everybody else. Seems to be where the action is. But what do you really believe? Can you take Pentecost? Can you just take it and leave it? Does it really matter whether you believe in the full gospel or not? Does it really matter? Is it justification by faith in Christ alone? Is that the way you're really saved? Can you be saved by doing good works and being baptized and being circumcised or joining the church and being nice to your neighbor? Just claiming a little religion, a little devil do you glory hallelujah. Is that the way it is? Well, Jesus said there's a difference. He said, if you're not for me, you're against me. And there are preachers in this world, they don't preach against sin. They don't preach against ungodliness. My sister was telling me the other day that she's got somebody listening to our sessions now. And this gentleman, this brother in Christ, he made the comment. He said, one reason I listen is because, well, he's crazy. He makes all this humor. And another reason I listen is because... A lot of preachers don't even preach about sin. They don't even preach against sin anymore. Well, you've got to preach love of God, and you've got to preach against sin. you have to preach the whole counsel of God. But John said here, they went out from us. They were religious people. They knew what church was all about, but they didn't know what Jesus was all about. But they went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, a real part of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they may be made manifest that they were not all of us. Jesus said, I've chosen you twelve, and one of you is the devil. And sooner or later, it's going to come out. Sooner or later, they'll manifest who they really are. They're concentrated on unsatisfied religious people. The spirit of Antichrist, in these last days, is characteristic of these last days, it's classified as many because many are following after this system. And it's concentrated on unsatisfied religious people. If you come to Jesus Christ and you're truly born again, the Bible said that blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. 
When you come to Christ and you're born again, you don't hunger anymore. You don't thirst anymore. You're not unsatisfied anymore because he will fill you and you're filled. You're satisfied. You don't hunger. You don't thirst. You don't go after these things. You don't keep on searching. And these people who they come to church and they get baptized and they'll give a testimony, but somehow they're not satisfied. They keep on searching and keep on trying and you always got to have another prophecy. You always got to get to another level. Well, how many levels do we have to get to before we're satisfied in Jesus Christ? If we cannot be satisfied by being saved and being sanctified and baptized in the Holy Spirit and operating in the gifts of God and having the Word of God, we're so blessed every day. If we can't be satisfied with that, nothing else in this world will satisfy us. And we need to be satisfied not only as religious people, but as Christians. And as a Christian, you will be satisfied. We are complete in Him who is the head of all principality and power and the head of the church. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 says, In Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And we're satisfied in Him. But these religious people who go from one camp to another camp, from one meeting to another meeting, one preacher to another preacher, one church to another church, they're never satisfied. They're religious people, but they're not saved people. And I don't say that they're not saved. I'm not their judge. But according to God's prophet here, God's disciple John, they're not of us. They're not part of the body of Christ. If they were part of the body of Christ, they would no doubt have continued with us. And these people, they can just go to another church. They can just go anywhere. And you ought to be able to go anywhere and worship God. But not just to go and just pull yourself up Act like you've never had any experience with God in the Holiness Church and in the place where you were. You said you believed it. You said that you loved it. You said it was part of your life and your spiritual experience. And now you just go to anywhere and you'll never be satisfied. You've got to get somewhere where you're satisfied in Jesus Christ. There's no perfect church. If it is, you better not join it, do you? You'll mess it up. But you've got to get to a place in your life. I'm satisfied with my life. That doesn't mean that I don't want to grow. That doesn't mean I don't want to do better. It doesn't mean that I don't want to strive to be a better man, a better Christian. But I'm satisfied with my life. Preacher preaches and he said, are you satisfied with your life? And I said, yes, sir, I am. In myself, I say it. I don't say it out loud. But I say, yes, sir, I am. I'm satisfied with my life. That doesn't mean I don't like everything in my life. No, I don't like blindness. I don't like sickness. I don't like lameness. I don't like this unforgetfulness. What did I say? I don't like any of that, but it's part of life sometimes. I'm not satisfied with that, but I'm satisfied with my salvation. I'm satisfied with my sanctification. I'm satisfied with my spirit baptism. I'm satisfied in Jesus Christ. And you have to get to the place where you're satisfied. These religious people that are always unsatisfied, and that's part of the spirit of Antichrist, is concentrated on unsatisfied religious people. And if the evil one can get a hold of religious people who are unsatisfied, he can use them to do a lot of destruction in the family of God. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. This spirit of Antichrist is conquered by the true anointing and spirit of holiness. You have an unction, that same word, the anointing. You have an anointing. You have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. It conquers the spirit of Antichrist. This power of God, this true spirit of holiness, the Holy Ghost himself in the body of Christ, he conquers this spirit of Antichrist that's so raging in our age in which we live today. But it's not in the body of Christ. It doesn't take hold of the body of Christ because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. It's carried out and spread by means of lying. The spirit of Antichrist, the reason it's so successful in the day in which we live, is because it's carried out and spread by means of lying. It's a lying spirit. It's always been a lying spirit. Jesus told the Jews, he said, you're not of God like you claim. You're not sons of Abraham. I know that you are physically sons of Abraham, but you're not really spiritual sons and daughters of Abraham. 
He said, I'll tell you who your father is. You're of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a liar from the beginning. He abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And this is the spirit of Antichrist that's so gripping, vice-gripping in our world today. It's carried out and spread through lying. So many lies. They lie to each other in Washington. They lie to each other in our government. They lie on the news. They lie on the weather forecast. You can't depend on anybody anymore, hardly, because everybody's telling lies. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And we would say it like this in our English. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. The Jews said, God is our Father. Jesus said, No way, Jose. If God were your Father, you would love me because I proceeded and came forth from God. And the prophet here says, the disciple here says, Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? You've got to believe that more than he was just a good man or that he was a teacher. You've got to believe that he is a Christ. He is the anointed one of God. The Jews didn't accept it. They couldn't accept it. And therefore, they were liars. He said, you're of your father. You're of that lying one, the devil, because you claim that God is your father, and yet you hate me. And I came forth and proceeded and came forth from God. He is Antichrist who denies the father and the son. They say, oh, yeah, we love God the Father. We don't want to have anything to do with the Son. You can't do that. If you deny the Son, you deny the Father. If you deny the Father, you deny the Son. That's what the next verse says. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. How do you know you have God? Well, you just acknowledge Jesus. I acknowledge Jesus as who he said he was. He's the Son of God. He's God the Son. I know that if I acknowledge him, I have the Father. If I acknowledge the Father, I have the Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. It's just as simple as that. You love God and you love each other. He who loves God and loves each other, he has eternal life. You believe on Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The spirit of Antichrist is taking over our world today, and it's getting darker and darker. Not in the body of Christ, not in the true church of God, but in this world it's getting darker and darker. Darkness is overtaking the world, and the devil is rocking the baby to sleep. He just says, be quiet, preacher. Be quiet, singers. Don't get so loud. Let me keep on rocking the world to sleep. We know that we're of God, and the whole world lies in darkness and wickedness. The devil has rocked the world to sleep, and he's doing a good job of it, and rocking the world to sleep. That's why they can't think for themselves. That's why they can't seemingly do what's right, because the devil's rocking the baby to sleep. He wants the world to keep on being quiet. Don't stand up for what's right. Don't holler. Don't be an alarmist. Don't exclaim. Don't proclaim the word of God. But we're going to keep on proclaiming the word of God as long as we can because the spirit of Antichrist is overcome by the spirit of God. And he is mightier. He is greater. The one who lives in us is greater than the one who is in the world. John talks about this Antichrist. You know that Antichrist will come. And even now there are many Antichrists. And he tells us that this Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist is gripping our world. Such a hard thing. Why is it so hard to get off drugs? Why is it so hard to get off alcohol? Why is it so hard to get away from these bad relationships? It's because the spirit of Antichrist is gripping our world today. That's why it's so hard. And I may be old-fashioned, but I still believe that Jesus Christ can save you, just like he saved many of us at an old-time altar or beside your bed or wherever it was. If he really saves you and he really gets a hold of your life, Shema He Rabbi Glory to God. He really gets a hold of your life and He saves you. He'll deliver you from them drugs. He'll deliver you from them nerve pills. 
He'll deliver you from them value. He'll deliver you and he'll take these things out of your life. He'll take alcohol away from you. He'll take that sex demon out of your life. Whatever it is that's got you bound, he'll take it away. Jesus Christ can still set you free. We talk about building hope centers and building rehab centers and putting it under the auspices and name of the church. That's good. It makes the world a better place to live before you go to hell anyway. But Jesus Christ... What happened to our message that said that Jesus Christ is all you need? We sing about it. He's all I need. He's all I need. Well, if he's all I need, he's all I need. I don't need to be rehabbed. I don't need to stand up and say, I'm a recovering alcoholic. How long are you going to say that? When Jesus Christ set you free, he set you free. You're not a recovering alcoholic anymore. You're not an alcoholic anymore because you've already recovered. You're not recovering because you've already recovered, past tense. He set you free. When do we get to the point where we declare ourselves free? Have we got enough faith to declare that he has really set us free? Are we going to continue to say, no, I'm in recovery. I'm in recovery. I'm in recovery. Well, when are you going to be recovered? When are you going to be set free? The Bible still said, who the son sets free is free indeed. He will set you free. He will make you free. And you can be free in Jesus Christ. He will break that spirit of Antichrist off of our nation and off of our world. And all we have to do is turn to God and trust in Him, and He will set us free. The message you have just heard from 1 John chapter 2 was part of a recent Friday evening Zoom session prayer meeting. The title has been, The Spirit of Antichrist. Be sure you are saved and right with God. Then you will have the Holy Spirit, who is far greater than the evil spirit, the Spirit of Antichrist. This has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 